Hey, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and as you may have guessed from the title of this video, we are cutting weight from that bloated bug out bag because you're probably guilty of this. I know I am, and I know a lot of YouTube videos are also guilty of this, and that is putting too much weight in the bug out bag that you never, ever use. So, in my mindset, if there is a real bug out situation that is so hardcore and so intense that I get forced into the freaking woods, I know that'd be really, really, really freaking bad. So I wanna have a lightweight gear set that enables me to move fast, be efficient, conserve calories, and put as much space and distance between that situation as I possibly can. So how do you do that aside from lots of strength and conditioning training? You cut weight from that bug out bag. So let's go ahead and jump into it, starting now, and I'm betting, odds are, I'll give you guys a little hint, I cut five pounds from my bug out bag build, and I guarantee you, there's probably room for you to improve as well. So I think you gotta enjoy this video. Let's go ahead and jump into it. <laughs> the first point of focus is the tools that you carry in your bug out bag. And the questions you need to ask yourself is, can I live without this item without being horribly miserable in a survival situation? And what can I swap out for a lighter weight alternative? So for me, I can 100% do without the Leatherman multi-tool. It looks cool. I've spent a pretty penny on it, but it literally is serving no purpose. So that can stay at home. I can take the M9 bayonet, which is super badass and looks like I'm running around like Rambo out there. Um, I can take that and I can go back to my Mora and then the only other tool that I actually need is the Silky Pocket Boy. And yes, one could argue that you don't even need the saw. All you need is a knife. For me, I like to be able to quickly and effectively process wood. And you're going to be a lot more effective with a folding saw than just a knife. So that's really what I'm sticking with here. I'm going with the Mora and I'm keeping my Silky Pocket Boy. And I bet if you look to the tools that are in your bug out bag, everything from knife sharpeners, to knives, to multi-tools, to whatever, I guarantee you, you can find some ways to cut weight. And most of these items do weigh a fair amount. So simply removing one item that you're not using is gonna make a big difference. The next area of focus is the cook set and related items. And I will warn you, this is where you can start spending money really quick and it can get out of control. So be careful and be intentional. The first move I made when I started, you know, getting into this survivalist lifestyle, once again was ditching the mess kit that I had bought. And I forget where I got this, maybe some army navy store or whatever, but you know, it's you know, a pot, a skillet, and all this other kind of crap, and then cutlery. Totally pointless, don't need it, it takes up way too much space. I ditched that for the backpacker style stove that you see here. And then for the cutlery, I went all titanium, fork and spoon. Now, yes, you can do a spork, that's up to you. I hate spork, so I, so I wanted to maintain a little sense of decorum and class by having a fork and a spoon. And then the knife, of course, I got that one covered. So that's a couple ways where you can cut weight just by looking at your cook set, replacing what makes sense with titanium, and then, you know, changing out, you know, the whole mess kit and that whole concept. But the other sp spot where I can see there being a um, weight savings is with the stainless steel canteen. As much as I dislike doing it, because I love the Pathfinder stainless steel canteen, I had to swap it out for my 1944 military issue stainless steel canteen. And I'm guessing if this canteen could talk, it might have some pretty cool stories to tell, but whatever the case is, that saved me in weight. And then finally, if I really super wanted to save like two ounces, I would go buy a titanium canteen, but I'm not gonna spend $150 to save two ounces on a titanium canteen. It's just not gonna happen. The next area where you can save weight is related to pouches. So if you're like me, you might have a dedicated medical IFAC pouch, right? Or you might have an organizer pouch or an admin pouch or whatever the case is. Pouches are great, don't get me wrong, for organizing lots of small items. But if you're not organizing lots of small items, then why are you really using this pouch? For me, I made an intentional choice. I'm going to keep the pouches for the medical stuff, but for the bigger stuff like the fire starter items, the water filter, 
just gonna go with these heavy duty Ziploc bags. Now, do I know this will work? I have no idea right now. I'm still working through this and I'm testing this out. So maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but if it does work, I'm definitely going to shave some ounces off of my bug out bag, total weight, and um, you know, have these zipper bags can also serve more than one purpose as well. And then also they're waterproof. Now, these bags are El Cheapo brand that I picked up on Amazon. Lots of great reviews. If this concept does work out for me, I'll probably invest a little bit of money in the new waterproof bags that you see out by Magpul. If you're not aware of those, those are called DACA, D-A-K-A. -A. And then I think Night Eyes also has the same concept of like a heavy duty zipper bag, has a, has a see-through window, it's waterproof, and it might work out. So we'll see how that goes. Next, we got to talk about something that weighs a ton in your pack, and that is water. I've been in the habit of like hitting the trail with the canteen fully full, 64 ounces, and either two or three liter hydro bladder, and maybe another water bottle. That adds up some serious weight. So my thought is this, if I'm traveling through an area where there's lots of water sources, why do I need to be trapped? like dragging along a bunch of water with me when I can just refill, right? Now, of course, there's variables involved there. If you are unfortunate enough to be in such a terrible situation where you get forced out into the woods, then maybe you're under duress. Maybe you're being chased by hostile forces, whatever. Maybe you don't have time to stop and fill up water and take that leisurely, um, you know, opportunity to, to filter water and go through that whole process. So maybe in that, that aspect, Maybe it's better just have that water on you. But for other situations, maybe it's not that big of a deal. Maybe you carry a minimum set of water over a short distance. And then there's other variables you got to take into account, like summer, where you're going to need more water. The water sources may be less available. You also have to factor in the distance you're, you're traveling over and all that. But think through those variables. I'm working through them and I'm thinking about where I can cut some weight when it comes to the water. Up next is shelter, and this is an area where I've been able to realize some big, big savings in weight. Now, way back in the day, I had a tent. I think we probably all started out with a tent, like an actual tent with poles. It was big, clumsy, heavy, totally, you know, I mean, great to throw up in the backyard, but for anything else, nope. So I ditched the tent more than a few years ago and got a tarp. That was a little bit of a psychological adjustment because sleeping um, with a tarp <laughs> with openings on it, it's kind of weird because like the first couple times I did, I'm like, oh man, are like crazy weird animals going to come through my campsite? Am I going to get eaten by an alligator? Obviously none of those things happen and animals avoid you anyways. So that wasn't a big deal. There was a little bit of a psychological adjustment there. But even at that point in time, the tarp was big and super heavy. It was too much. So this is where I've landed now. The shelter is the Miltec military poncho that you guys have probably seen me use if you watch any of my recent videos. It is a poncho, but it is also a shelter. I pair that with a basic hammock, and that's that's really all I need for the shelter system. Now, those are the top five ways that have worked for me, high level, to cut weight from my 72-hour kit. But there's some other options you guys want to check out, and that is number one, go over to Reddit. If you don't have an account there, go create an account because there's tons of great subreddits on survivalism and backpacking and all that good stuff. But there's one in particular called Slash Ultralight, and that one just basically has a bunch of ultralight backpacking freaks on it who will drop $400 for a sleeping bag just to save a couple ounces. But there are also some really good common sense advice and budget tips on there as well. So go check that out. I got some good inspiration from them. And then also YouTube, obviously, go on there, do a search for you know budget ultralight backpacking gear, and you'll find some really good channels. The final conclusion that you can make, if you've cut weight from your gear set, obviously you're probably gonna be able to downgrade that pack in size. Maybe you jump from 35 to 30. Maybe during the summer you can spin up a Pacific build that is maybe just like a two day pack, right? Maybe you can break 20 pounds. That's my goal for my summer 72 hour gear set, which I'm working on as we speak. So I appreciate you guys watching. Hit me up in those comments like you always do giving me inspiration, giving me support. I love it, and I'll see you in the next video. Show your support for the channel by checking out the wide range of survival gear available at thesurvivaloutpost.com. We stock only top quality, rugged, tactical equipment and apparel designed to support any mission or situation life may throw your way. 
Any gear you've seen in this video is linked up down there in the pin post and be sure to check out the suggested videos for more real world survival content and training.